you're watching the Coconut Daddy channel. So we want to talk about, got a little bit of time here to talk about Suspiria. And uh, I got to see the new one. You got to see the older one. And I'm, I'm just like. 1977. 77. Oh, bless your heart. See, I was still alive in 77, so. <laughs> <laughs> I was alive. And I'll tell you something real quick about these. I'm going to do a disclaimer because there's a lot of controversy about these films and where they stay in cinema. I, I'm going to say this, get the positives right out to these films, is there is no other film visually that can compare to Suspira. Okay, write that down. And quote, uh, Coconut Daddy said, visually, as far as music, there are no other films out there that can compare musically to these two films, to the Sabir films. And then finally, I'll say this. The only way you'll understand these films is watching documentaries and films and books to figure out what the hell's going on. <laughs> but other than that, I'll give you the two, those two positives for the films. And, so, you know, what, I mean, besides the fact that we learned that girls that start with the name S are bad because they sound like snakes. They're snakes. They're snakes. Keep that in mind. Sarah, I once read that names which begin with the letter S are the names of snakes. S <laughs> That is what I learned, but if you want to know what these films are about, you're going to have to Google it. because And that and I'm meaning if you watch the films. If you watch the film and you don't know what it's about, that's okay. That's the reason why it's supposed to be. Now, as far as learning what these films are about, you're going to have to Google it. So, do your homework. Figure out what this film is about. But if you want to enjoy the visuals, because as far as photography, as far as videography, I would say... Dario Argento has influenced me. I would love to take over the lighting that these films have I, and the visuals. I'll give him that. But that's And the music, he's influenced me musically in these films as well. So your take, this is your first time you've ever watched this. And I thought, why don't let kiddo do it? And I'll watch this new one and compare. And you know what? The same feeling I have, the first one is the same feeling as I had the last one. We're not clear what the hell's going on. So let's talk about what we can about these films. What are, what are these about? Okay. Not what are these about. I mean, what do we get out of it? Because we don't know what we're not going to do. It. You guys have to Google figure out what they're about. But Murder at the Ballet School. There you go. Murder at the Ballet School. But we know it's supernatural, right? You did get that feeling that it is something supernatural. Yeah, at the end, yeah. It, it, takes, it takes a while, though. Uh, I had a lot of notes but honestly, they not all of them were important. But um, I guess I want to start out by telling you my favorite part of the production, or I guess my favorite part of the movie, and then my least favorite part of the production. Okay? You okay. Ready? I'm ready. Okay. My favorite part was the first death because it was so overdone in so many ways that I absolutely loved it. Okay. Can, the, can I stop uh, you just the, right here? I just want to stop you right here about that first death. True story. Okay. I had never seen the film, but there was a documentary that Fangor sent out about, you know, horror films. So they go through, like, Texas Chainsaw, Freddy Krueger, Jason, and blah, blah, blah. They show that first scene. Of all of those, that one, like, got to me. I mean, it just, like, really was like, okay. <laughs> Go on. It was great. It was dramatic. It was, she comes crashing through the ceiling and then hung. And I, bravo. It was great. And that's that the first, like, oh, yeah, and that's the, the right, and that's the first setup of those wild sets. 
And a lot of people think that was they were expensive. They actually like took cheap cardboard and painted all that stuff up, and then they like the it was glass. Beautiful though. Yeah, it, it looked it great. Was, and it and was to weird, me, but it was very visually entertaining. And yeah, and I was set. like, I would love to make sets like that for photography. Mm-hmm. My God, it was interesting. It was really nice. Um, but. I guess I guess there's a few things that I noticed about the movie. Um, we could go into the whole plot, but it's there really a isn't one. There really to discern, isn't. <laughs> to discern. Um, I guess basically uh, this girl Susie she goes to this ballet school and finds out that there's like a bunch of weird stuff happening. Um, she ends up, like, you know, suffering from, like, this weird brain trauma and then just, like, a bunch of other things. And what she ends up doing is following the people who are in charge of this place into the basement and basically finds out that they're all witches. They're witches and they're witches. Well, that's typical ballet school. (laughs) But, oh, my gosh, it had such... The acting was so terrible in the one of 1977. It was so terrible. And the very worst part was and that it, I was saying. Yeah, now that was, was all dubbed. Now, you got to remember, this is all dubbed because they they shot the film silently in those days. And then they added the dubbing later. And so, Really? We noticed that whenever she was talking to a doctor yeah. because, like, his mouth, like, it wasn't syncing up. So I had yeah. no idea. But my boyfriend ended up watching this with me. And he had a few funny comments, like Bless whenever they were like dancing, he was like, "Wow, so if guys are going to be in ballet, they need to save their chests because they're popping out of those leotards." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, witches, witches, right. yeah. And and basically, you know, the the wife, which I guess it was his future wife or future girlfriend, helped him write the film. They were trying to capture the old. You know, fairy tales. And they thought a new take on the fairy tales. The only problem is we get, of course, when we get to the daylight and we're talking to the doctor, Dr. Exposition, who is trying to, you know, do this best to explain what's going on so people can understand the best of his, best of his ability, you know, to try to capture the fairy tales. And so, you know, of, uh, I guess Snow White, because that's one thing, reason why he hired the actress that he did who played that role because she, she had the biggest eyes they wanted somebody with Disney eyes they call them Disney eyes and of course but because back in those days there really wasn't any anime but that's basically what anime ripped off from Disney was the Disney eyes was like the bigger the eyes you can show emotion blah 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 and she just has that perfect anime eyes look and that's the whole idea the reason why he hired her to do to give that he wanted a Disney live action Disney cartoon basically you know, well, if you watch Sleeping Beauty when you were a kid, it's a little bit scarier than. Yeah, you know. but there isn't like a bunch of different murders in a ballet school with witches. Yeah, but is the witches did scare you in Sleeping Beauty? I mean, that's the point. Definitely, yeah, yeah, and and the thing is, that's what you want to try to do is like, except for it's, it's for adults, and that's you know, kind of give that you know feel to it. And I mean, that's what hit what you know his girlfriend or wife. I can't remember if they got married. I think they did get married. and They got divorced, and then she still starred in his films. In fact, he killed her violently in one of his films just to express it. But he, there, this is a trilogy. A lot of people don't know this is a trilogy. You have really? Suspira, then you have Inferno, and then you have, of course, the last one, which was the Mother of Tears. And unfortunately, they're very long. You know, gaps between those films. And of course, it is because you'll, I don't know if you grasp the whole history. There's supposed to be a three witches in certain areas. Because they go from this one is in Germany, and then they go to the next one, which is in, of course, the uh, Louisiana, and then it goes back to Rome. And I don't know how that makes a triangle. But, anyways. The last one is the worst witch, but the most beautiful witch, which is the Mother of Tears. And, of course, uh-huh. right. And then Suspira. But you have to Google this. You have to Google up. And, and people will say, you know, this is a good story, but it's too bad they don't apply it to the film. Mm-hmm. Right, because... Well, yeah. 
Go ahead. I guess uh, <laughs> I guess I'll go ahead and say uh, I keep like I'm leading up to it and then not saying it. But the worst part about this film was that like in order to make the scary part scary, as they had to add the backtracking and the backtrack of like eerie music, with yeah, howling and right. scratch. Now that that is something that, like I said, I said when I go back to, you know, the whole good parts of the film, you got this visually beautiful, I guess surreal look. Then you have this amazing soundtrack, hate it, love it, or whatever. The point is, without it, you would not have this film. You know, like this banging yeah. of metal, you know, you, uh, and we're not he talking... He was always so loud and yeah. annoying. I and there's like, some oh parts God. where he's just whispering, witch, 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 witch. And, you know, this crazy, surreal stuff. And uh, and people see, I can see critics going, wow, this is amazing, blah, blah, blah. But what about this thing called a story? And it's not really put out in front of you. But like I said, I mean, visually walk into a theater, you're like watching something that you have never seen before. I mean, this is mm-hmm. just, uh, you know, amazing. And like I said, this was in 77 at the same time Star Wars is coming out. And like, if you went oh, really? to, oh yeah. And so you're thinking, you gotta look when you're a kid and you're looking through the newspaper for a movie to see. Of course, this film probably didn't come overseas until late seventies and early eighties or whatever. But, you know, you're going through there, well, I want to see Star Wars, you got this film and the Smokey and the Bandit pretty much. Those are the three choices you got. And to comparison, I mean, you know, they're all three in their own little worlds. And, uh, you know, Dario Argento is really creative. I, I would say my favorite of his is Tenebra, which is, has to do with a writer, like a Stephen King type writer who has to go through his own murders and there's a really nice twist at the end because I understand what's going on. I mean, he's did a lot of the Italian giallo, a lot of visuals like Deep Red and, and of course, my, the guy who created Halloween, John Carpenter, admits he stole Deep Red's visuals. He said that's what I was going to really? go for. Right. Yeah. The music from Deep Red is in Halloween. The visuals is, from Halloween are in Halloween from Deep Red. And so, I mean, Dario Argento is a real creative guy. And like I said, this, this film, you know, is, I have to put it in something of its own category, but as far as, Figuring out what's going on, you have to do your research, and I hate films like that, but I'll give this one a pass when it comes to that. You know, it's like, get on the internet, go look at Google it if you want to know what it's about. Pretty much, yeah. It was it was hard to really know what it was about until I watched, like, the entire movie. And one thing that I noticed at the very end of the movie, they were like, you have been watching Suspiria. <laughs> Please put out your cigarettes at the end of the film and walk out slowly. <laughs> yeah, it was the whole thing. Um, I had a bunch of notes about the beautiful architecture and, like you've said, just all of the visual cues, the stained glass windows I really loved. Um, the maggots. I- about 1970s swimwear. I forgot about that. That's right. They have this pool scene, and that's a beautiful pool too. That's a. Good it really one. was. It really was. That's for sure. Um, yeah. A lot of the notes that I took were just issues with the movie, like um, with Sarah's death. She's not bloody in one shot, and then instantly, like horrifically bloody in the next. Right. Uh, after getting stabbed, like, she's not bloody, and then she's all bloody. Uh, <laughs> just a bunch of little things like that. Um, uh, or one was, one point where you have, like, the barbed wire is, like, barbed, and then the next is not barbed. You, did you know? Yeah, I know. Whenever she fell into the water, we were, the wire, we were like, what? And then she was, like, hella struggling with it, too, and we were like, what? <laughs> and then an offhand... Uh, an off-camera hand is just like, I come and stab you now. Right. And then that's the thing that amazes me about <laughs> Italian. And I wonder if Italians think this way because, you know, Dario Argento is Italian. Because, like, when we do supernatural thrillers, 
we always have like we know that this is a dream sequence or whatever with that it's like why is there is is see that's the question that I have about the film is there an actual person doing the killing or is this all supernatural that's what kind of you know what confuses me yeah, I have no idea. It wasn't making much sense to me. I thought like the reason that the killer was always off uh off camera was because we were eventually going to meet them and like right. figure out who it was, you know, but that just wasn't the case apparently. Well, see, and that's the whole thing. And I think the new film does that a little bit better, but it's so long and boring compared mm-hmm. to the yeah, and I hate that, but because supernaturally, okay, like, for instance, when she looks out the window at the beginning, you see the eyes, and uh, you think, okay, well, something supernatural is going to happen to get this character, but you see this physical hand stabbing them, and then they physically get hanged and whatever. But I'm thinking, like, if you were, like, a supernatural person killing people, wouldn't you, like, well, if I can create these eyes to scare you, wouldn't I, like, I don't know throw a chair at you or something over the head because I could lift it. It's anything. Like, it just didn't lead anywhere, it felt like. Right. But I I wonder if they think, like, in Italy, they think, well, supernaturally, they would physically have a hand and it would appear out of nowhere. Like, are we just seeing a hand that's coming out of nowhere stabbing people? Or if it's, like, a whole person? Right. It's like, what would this super... Is this a supernatural character killing these people off? Or is this like the witches trying to cover up the conspiracy that they're witches? Which one is it? That's what's confusing to me. You know what I'm saying? Which yeah, one no, is I'm it? With that. And I don't have an answer for you, but right. And you know. th- th- and that's why I was wondering if in Italy that's how they think because they think that their ghosts come physically and they start stabbing. I just think a ghost would be more creative. That's just my opinion. You know, they would like yeah, most definitely, most definitely. That's. I- like, like, because in the new one, what they do is the they use their powers to kill people, which would make sense because they're witches. So they do their dances, and when they do their dances, it creates, you know, the ability to kill somebody. So what they do is they do different contortions, and then they out contortion the person's body. So like, whenever they throw their hands up there, they literally throw the person's hands out of the joint. And then, like, when That's they, I wish they would have actually done that, like, right. in the other movie, because it didn't make any sense. It really didn't. It was just like, okay, now we're gonna do these things, you know? Right. And and that's crazy, but you know, as far as and again, like, because I know there's a lot of people that love the film. And I love the film too, guys. Don't don't hate us for this, but visually, it's a strong movie. Musically, I think yeah. it's a strong movie. It, it, it's scary. It sets a tone. But as far as, you know, how clear the story and the plot is, you have to research it. And it's a shame that don't give us homework when we watch a film. That's all I'm asking. It's like, you know, we get enough homework at school and work. Why are you make us do homework on these films? Because you look at this story. Yeah, this make great movie. But, you know, like I said, I understand why the film is boring. I want to tell you my favorite Dario Argento quote before we go here because it's Uh almost time to go. All right, so Dario Argento is the father of Asia Argento, who's a, you know, famous actress, and, you know, she's got to be older than me now. And okay. her, she's, he said this, and of course this was actually a quote from Alfred Hitchcock. Alfred Hitchcock supposedly said that all actors are animals. And Dario Argento said the same thing. He said actors are animals, and Asia, his daughter, was the only daughter, because his other daughter did not want to do uh, you know, acting. One was granted with acting. Yeah. Sc- yeah. One was granted with acting. I wouldn't, sc- blame her. I wouldn't blame her at all. <laughs> What's that? I wouldn't blame her for not wanting to act once your like sister and dad are in like the, you know, already in the scene. Well, like- the older daughter was. Here's what way I describe it. His older daughter had the looks. Asia obviously had the talent, and that's. And the other daughter was like, no, I don't want any part of it. You know. So, mm-hmm. which, you know, which is okay, but Asia, you know, decided to pursue acting, and she's been a pretty good actress, and for her age, I mean, she was a 
went up against Van Diesel in Triple X. I mean, she was a love interest in Van, Van Diesel. And you got to imagine, she was like probably 10 years older than Van Diesel. So, you know, she did really wow. well. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, as far, I mean, she aged well. I mean, she aged well. And so mm-hmm. anyways, she told her, you know, her dad quoted that Alfred Hitchcock quote was like, all actors are animals. And she said, how can you say that? You know, I'm an actor. How can you say that about actors? And Dario looked at his daughter and goes, no, you're not. Well, it's funny because he don't want to perceive his daughter as an actress. Like she's like the animals. <laughs> it's little daughters, you know. I love that quote. I think that's, that's funny. That but, is funny. I like that. I do buddy, enjoy that. But, you know, because your daughter's still your daughter. She's not an actor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I always love that quote. But Dario Argento, look up his works. Uh, I love Tina Bras, probably my favorite. Uh, you know, visually, just a great director visually. You know, and I think that's the reason why people go to the films. They don't really go for the plot. They go really for the visual in his later years, he's not really good with his films. He's kind of gone down. Of course, he's probably in it. He's probably he's in his eighties now. But guy, just uh, check his stuff out. So, Pierre, I do recommend people to check it out visually as a filmmaker. Say, so, hey, look, I love this visually. What can we do to create a good story around something visually like that? Like I said, I would love to do something photography wise, like they did with these. Uh, Mm-hmm. places so you guys I do appreciate you guys watching us um, I, unfortunately I didn't get into uh, the new one that's coming out but that's alright you guys I, thanks for watching watch uh, as far as Angel has fallen would you recommend people go see it if it's something that you think that you would enjoy if you like movies about the president getting kidnapped in the CIA and action films with a bunch of guns then yeah go for it okay what about um, uh, what about Suspiria? Would you recommend people checking it out? <laughs> Maybe the new one. <laughs> Maybe the new one. It was just a little hard to watch the old one just because it was so old. I, if here's what I say about the new one: if you want to, you know, if you're if you like want to be put to sleep, yeah, watch the new one. It definitely will put you to sleep. I mean, towards the end, the ending is fine. But again, so much padding because these films have to be so long. And I want to kill the person who decided that go from 90 minutes to two hours. Who made that rule, folks? I mean, why? Why do we have to make these films two hours to three hours long? God, I hate you. I mean, it's like that third Batman film. I mean, how they had to pad that sucker out. You know, it's like, you want to kill the guy. It's like, really? All right, guys. All right, we're going to talk a little bit, a couple bits while you guys are gone. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Who's your daddy?